Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, an educator here at IT Pro TV, back with another fun and exciting How to Use Zoom for Educators episode in our ever ongoing search for ways to make you more productive as you teach and as you interact with your students in your virtual Zoom classrooms. We're going to join a meeting in progress. We're going to take a look at a brand new feature that's really making teaching and interacting with students in virtual environments a lot easier to manage. That is our breakout room capability. Zoom has the ability now to be able to give you as an educator a specific capability that allows you to take a group of students, however small or however big you want them to be, and associate them together in a room, allowing them to have their own private virtual space where they can work, they can chat, they can interact. And then when they're done doing that, bring them back in to the main classroom or the main meeting, which is really functioning as your classroom in these times. And by doing so, you can have groups break off, interact, collaborate, work on projects, but do so in a way that doesn't interact with and interrupt all the other students in the room. You also, as the educator, have the ability to be able to drop in on any and all of those breakout rooms, joining them when you need to in order to interact. And then when you're done, you can simply remove yourself coming back to the main meeting or classroom and keeping an eye on everything with a nice little control panel. You also have the ability to broadcast messages into those rooms, telling people they may have a certain amount of time in order to finish up an assignment, or just generally checking in and making sure they're all doing well. We're going to say hi to some of my IT Pro TV team members here who are kind enough to allow us to leverage them in this demo. They're going to act as some of our breakout room participants, and we're going to take a look at that side of the equation by looking at what it looks like for them when we assign them to a breakout room. Let's begin by going down to our Zoom toolbar at the bottom of our active meeting, and we're going to see we have our breakout room item right down below there, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a breakout room. We get a little pop-up screen that asks us to create however many breakout rooms we want, whatever the number is, along with three distinct options for how we want to assign individuals, either automatically allowing Zoom to essentially randomly put them in, manually we control that assignment, or let the participants, the students, assign themselves because maybe you've already given them a team dynamic, you've set them up in a group, and you want them to associate once the breakout rooms are available so they have self-directed study. You've got flexibility. We'll go in, we'll go to breakout rooms. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a single breakout room for our demonstration. You see the three options there. You'll see we have three participants per room currently. We can modify that if necessary, and we can change any and all of those options out with our option settings uh, in the Zoom program itself and or through the web portal, depending on what we choose to do. And we also have some options about the breakout room once it's set up in terms of the time it's available for and notification when we're getting ready to close it. I'm going to set this to assign manually because I want to control who's going to go into my breakout room. So we'll create that room. And we just have a blank slate that really doesn't let us do anything right now except rename or delete but notice to the far right, we can assign, and that's what we're about to do. We're gonna assign those participants. Now that number three that we saw just a moment ago was not an artificial limit imposed by Zoom. It's the limit based on the number of participants in the meeting. I've only got three people in the meeting other than myself, so that's the maximum number of people I can assign. We can modify that number, obviously, by having more participants, and then we can assign more people, just so you know. I do have some options, as I mentioned. We do have an options menu at the lower left. We could see that there. I can add new rooms, and I can recreate a room from here. Let's assign several people in here. So we're going to assign, come over here. We'll see we have a very simple interface. We check off by selecting next to someone's name that we want them to participate. I'm gonna add Corolla and I'm gonna add Gigi into our breakout room. When I do that, you'll notice that they show up here on the list, they are selected, but they're not actually in yet. They're just candidates to be admitted. The system is gonna send them an invitation, a little pop-up message on their computer screen, inviting them to click the link and join the breakout room. We're gonna see what that looks like on Corolla's machine in just a moment. So we've got those two set up in there. We'll just click away from our selector box clearing that off the screen, setting us up to get ready to open up our room and allow those invitations to go out. But before we do that, 
Let's take a look at our options menu really quickly, and let's just see what's going on here. We can see we can allow participants to choose their room, allow participants to return to the main session at any time. Moving in and out of the breakout room is very important automatically move all assigned participants into breakout rooms at our discretion as this, the person who set this up. Breakout rooms close automatically after so many minutes. If you're maybe doing a timed activity, it would be good to automatically shut those down and bring everybody back together. You can do that right from here and notify when time is up will become an option and you can then count down after closing the breakout room to give people a heads up that they're about to return to that meeting. And you could specify the time there. And notice it's at 60 seconds, it defaults to that. We can actually take that down as low as 10, take that up as high as 120 seconds. You're limited to the options on the list, by the way. You can't type in your own value there. So we'll set that to 10 seconds. We'll go ahead and click away just to set our options. And now I'm gonna open up all rooms. Now when I do that, both Gigi and Corolla are gonna get a prompt on their screen to join. Gigi's gonna join, we're not gonna look at the prompt on her screen, she's just gonna go active. We'll see a green dot appear to the right of each of their names when they become active. But as soon as I do this, we're gonna flip over to Corolla's screen and we're gonna see the prompt and watch her join the breakout room. So let me click open all rooms. We'll see at the upper right-hand corner that I got a notification that those have been sent out, those invitations. Gigi has joined. She's green and active. Let's go over to Corolla's screen and let's see what she sees. She gets that prompt there that tells her that she essentially can engage in this activity and she can join if she wants to. She's about to click on that button. And when she does, she'll be taken to a separate window where she joins essentially another meeting in progress a private meeting, a breakout room. And we can see that both Corolla and Gigi are there by themselves, able to collaborate, uh, talk, participate, do whatever they want. It's essentially a private meeting. They can modify their speaker view if they want to. They can do all sorts of stuff in there. So notice, before we cut away from Corolla's machine, a uh, lower right-hand corner, I don't want Corolla to click on the button. I just wanted to show us it's there. It says leave room. Both of them have the ability to opt out of that room and come back to the main meeting, the main classroom, if and when they need to, or we can call them back when we're ready. All right, so back on my screen, if we can come back to me for a minute, I now will see that both Corolla and Gigi are active. We see a green dot that has appeared there. And I now, as the organizer here, could invite someone else, maybe Courtney, who arrived and is not part of that group, but I wanna have her add in. I could do that. Or I can go ahead, I can broadcast a message to everybody in the breakout room, in this case to Corolla and Gigi. Let's do that real quick, right? We'll ask them how everything is going, except I need some help typing. How is everything going? Do you need anything, right? And I can send that. And when we flip over to Corolla's machine, green rectangle-ish kind of area at the top, uh, telling us and telling Gigi as well, if we were looking at her machine, that essentially I've just sent a message and I'm asking them how they're doing, what's going on, you know, do they need something? If they do, of course, they can interact, they can give me a thumbs up or anything like that. Uh, and then they can interact with me if necessary. All right, coming back to my machine, we've broadcast out a message to them. Let's say I wanna jump into that room as the organizer, and maybe I wanna interact with them a little bit. I wanna spend some one-on-one -on -one time with that group before I move between the different rooms. Well, I can do that. Notice right up here to the right of the room, and by the way, if you have multiple rooms, every room will have this option. I can click join. And when I do that, I'm gonna be asked, if I wanna join the room, yes or no, very simple. And I'm gonna click yes. I'm gonna see that same dialog box, joining room one. It'll have the name of the room there that Corolla saw. I'm now in a breakout room. I'm just gonna make that full size just so we can see that. And I'm seeing Corolla and Gigi. Tells me I'm muted just because we don't wanna get all the feedback from me talking. I can interact with them if I turn my camera on. And if I wanna do that, let me just a second. I can turn on my camera, 
And when I do that, they'll see me, right? And so I can interact with them and wave hi and do things. We can chat, we can do whatever. And then when I'm done, when I decide that I've spent some time with them, we've checked in, everything is good. Then what I can do is come down here to the lower right-hand side, like we saw on Corolla's machine, and I can leave that room return back to the main meeting or class as we keep referring to it as. Before I do that, let me just kill my camera so that you're not gonna see all the crazy lights and stuff going on behind me in the studio. I'm gonna leave that room and notice when I do that, that I have three options. I can end the meeting, meaning essentially kill the meeting or the class for everybody. Probably don't wanna do that while we're jumping between breakout rooms talking to our students. I can leave the meeting I can opt out of the meeting, leaving others to engage, but what I probably wanna do is leave the breakout room, go back to the main meeting, wait for all my students to finish, and gather back up so we can continue our class. So what I'm gonna do is leave the breakout room. I'm shown that I'm returning to the main session. Zoom does a great job of telling me exactly what's happening, what's going on. I'm able to just make this full screen again. There's Courtney, right, back in our meeting, and She's the only unassigned participant right now because remember, Gigi and Corolla are still in the breakout room. They're not in the meeting right now. They're off on their own in that private breakout room. But if I go back here to my breakout rooms area, bring back up essentially my control panel as the facilitator, the teacher, right? The owner of that breakout room. I can go ahead and say, all right, you know what? It's been long enough. I want them to come on back and join us. Let's get back together and let's finish up our conversations as a group. I can do that by coming in, going down here to where it says close all rooms. So I can go ahead and I can do that. It says they've been given a 10 second heads up because I set the timer to 10 seconds before the room closes. We'll see it's about to close right there. There it is. The room is closed and notice right up top, as soon as they both pop back in, it takes a second for them to essentially travel back to the main meeting. We see both Corolla and Gigi have joined us back and now we're all back together again. And I can finish my discussion. I can integrate them back into the conversation with Courtney and we can round out our classroom or participatory experience with whatever is left on my agenda. We'll be back with additional ways that you as an educator and continue to use Zoom to become more productive, to interact with your remote students more, and overall, to just be able to be more comfortable teaching in this brave new online remote world. But until I come back with more how-to tips for you, I'm gonna wish you happy Zooming, and I'll see you soon.